Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Manziak, orthopaedic surgeon. Proceeding with a hip replacement is a major decision, and this should be based on the pain the hip is causing and the impact it's having on your life. I've made this educational video as I think it's extremely important for a patient to make an informed decision to obtain a good outcome from surgery. I've divided this talk up into what you can expect before, during and after surgery, including potential risks. Before surgery, we will discuss your medical history. I'll examine your hip and any x-rays or scans that you've had, and then we will discuss your treatment options. In the lead up to surgery, you will require blood tests, an ECG tracing of your heart, an anaesthetic appointment, and you may require further scans of the hip. It's important that you are healthy, motivated, and ready for surgery. This includes having any dental work done, and also sorting out any other illnesses or infections that need to be treated so you're as healthy as you can be for surgery. You also need to make sure that you have help arranged with meals and transport. This can include having meals in the freezer. And regarding transport, the national recommendation currently is that you should not drive for at least four weeks after a hip replacement. Patients are admitted to hospital and have their surgery on the same day. Once you've had your anaesthetic, I'll make an incision on the front or the side of the hip, depending on which approach we've decided is best for you. The basic principle of a hip replacement is to replace the ball and the socket. A new metal hemispherical socket is placed inside the pelvis with a polyethylene bearing inside it. Then a metal stem is placed inside the femur or thigh bone with a metal or ceramic ball on top of it. And then the hip is popped into joint. You have dissolving stitches in your incision and a waterproof dressing which will stay intact for at least two weeks and allows you to have a shower. After surgery, you'll be transferred to the recovery room for one or two hours. You'll have an intravenous drip for fluids and antibiotics to help prevent infection and pneumatic pumps on your feet to help prevent blood clots. You'll then be transferred to the orthopaedic ward and when your anaesthetic is worn off, we encourage you to get out of bed and stand and walk with the physiotherapists and nurses. Some pain or discomfort is expected after surgery, of course. On the first day, the hip is often quite numb from the anaesthetic, but this will subsequently wear off. We manage your pain with regular ice packs to the thigh and a variety of tablets. Weaker tablets given regularly in the background and then stronger ones on top of that as required. We aim to minimise the number of opioids or morphine derivatives that you take, as these often have undesirable side effects such as confusion, nausea, constipation and drowsiness as well as being strong addictive drugs. It's also worth noting that patients who come into hospital on more strong painkillers often need more strong painkillers afterwards. Some swelling will also develop in your thigh in the first few days after surgery, usually peaking around day three. That swelling will often travel down the leg due to gravity throughout the day. So patients often find that for months after surgery, in the afternoon and evening, they have some swelling in their ankles. This is normal and will go away with time. We usually anticipate around three nights in hospital for a standard hip replacement. You can go home when you're eating, drinking, toileting, and getting in and out of bed yourself, and when we all agree that you're safe to go home. It's best that you are discharged home and don't stay longer than required, as in the comfort of your own home, you'll eat better, sleep better, and you're out of a hospital that's full of sick people. It's important that you come in with the right mindset and motivation. When you come into hospital for a hip replacement, you are not a sick patient. You're there to improve your hip function and mobility, and so that's what you need to practice. Most people can go straight home from hospital. Occasionally people will need to go to a rehabilitation facility, but this is usually only if they live alone or if they're particularly weak or deconditioned before surgery. You can stop using a walking stick when you no longer have a limp. There's no shame in using a walking stick after a hip replacement, and it's not a competition to see who can get rid of their stick the quickest. You will see the physiotherapist each day in hospital, but once you get home, the main exercise is simply walking and concentrating on a good posture. You need to try and walk a little bit further each day as you feel comfortable, and if you overdo it, then you'll feel it and you can back off. Some patients will go on to need further physiotherapy, but this is usually only if they're particularly weak or deconditioned before surgery. Some simple modifications around the home can also help things like a toilet seat raise and a chair raise. I will routinely see you for an appointment two weeks after surgery and again at six weeks with an x-ray before the six week appointment. Hip replacement is generally a very successful operation with the benefits of pain relief and functional improvement. However, all procedures have small risks. There is a small risk of an anaesthetic and this can be discussed with the anaesthetist at your preoperative appointment. Specific for the hip, there is a small chance of infection, which occurs in about 1 in 100 patients. 
This can be difficult to treat and may require further surgery or multiple surgeries to try to eradicate the infection. Everyone loses a small amount of blood in surgery, but it's very rare to need a blood transfusion. Blood clots in the veins of the leg or the lung are also a small risk, and this is minimised through using pneumatic pumps on your feet, blood thinners, and getting you up and moving. Dislocation or popping the hip out of joint occurs in less than one in 100 cases. The physios in hospital will help advise you to avoid twisting on the operative leg and any extremes of motion in any direction to help minimise the risk. There is a chance of changing your leg length. Of course, I aim for your leg lengths to be exactly the same, and usually this is the case. But occasionally, I'm faced with a decision where I need to lengthen your leg a little to prevent it from popping out of joint. And this is a worthwhile trade. Other rare complications include things like fracturing the bone or injuring the nerves and blood vessels around the hip. In terms of longevity, the vast majority of hip replacements now last longer than 15 years. They can be done again, but it's always harder the second time. And lastly, there's always a chance of some ongoing aches and pains around the hip. When we replace the ball and socket, we're not replacing the muscles and tendons and other structures around the hip. So it's possible that you have muscular strains, tendonitis or bursitis in future. People often ask me how long a full recovery takes after a hip replacement. And the truth is, it takes a long time and there's wide variation among individuals. People are often feeling pretty good about their hip four to eight weeks after surgery. But a full recovery can take one or even two years. And this depends a lot on where the patient's starting. If you have any further questions, you can ask me in our consultation and bring a family member if you think that would help. Please feel free to give my office a call if you have any further questions also.